it's like a superpower in a way because you can see things that other people can't. You see the bigger picture. I'm better at hockey because I know where to stand in the pitch because I can understand the game better. I really like making my own stories. I love storytelling and I love communication. I was always very good at creative writing. I always make my own songs up in my head. I actually, I'm a rapper, so then I express myself while rapping. I would quite like to be a pop star. I'm so lucky because I always knew I wanted to be an actor and I get to do this for a living. As a child, I dreamt of being a scientist. One of my strengths is maths. I like building little robots and uh, lots of different things. Just remember that like you're different and it's a good thing. We talk a lot about how a dyslexic learner is not made for the traditional classroom, they're made for the world. And it's because they see things differently. Working with dyslexic children, you see that their minds work in very diverse ways. They're able to see the world in a way that we are not. The strengths they have are incredible. The way they can think around things, the ability to see the big picture. They are problem solvers. They are outside the box thinkers. Because they process information differently, they're able to see things from different angles. Many dyslexics are also very good at visualizing the big picture, uh, thinking through multiple steps and seeing connections, um, almost a symphony of ideas that they can bring together. Dyslexics are um, exceptionally curious learners. They're eager to explore. Um, if you tell a dyslexic that something is done in one way, um, they will find three, four, five other ways to demonstrate that exact same skill. Some of our, the greatest innovations, some of the greatest breakthroughs in our history have come out of a dyslexic mind's refusal to just accept the status quo. They ask why constantly which is fun in the classroom. They don't just take information for what it is. They want to know why. They want to know the background. They want reason for it. Dyslexics tend to be very creative and very good at uh, imagining new ideas. They tend to be innovators. Uh, they tend to be entrepreneurs, the game changers in our world, or that disrupt industries, um, that provide solutions that we didn't even know that we needed, or to solve problems we didn't even know we had. I may give certain instructions and am expecting a certain outcome, but with my dyslexic kids, I can never predict what they're going to come up with, and it's always, you know, outshines my expectations. Some dyslexic learners uh, can actually think three-dimensionally. They can uh, move parts around in their heads so that they can uh, understand how in, in physical space things are connected. This is going to be the child who is very good at Legos, that can put things together. Uh, it might be the child that takes paper clips and folded pieces of paper and an eraser and suddenly makes an entire city out of it. It might also be the child who, when you put them on the stage, they suddenly come to life and they have this physical presence where they can move their body uh, in a way that really expresses something. They also could be the child that on the sports field uh, seems to have this premonition uh, of, of how things are going to work. The child that can predict where the ball is going to go or know to move left when everyone else moves right because they understand that that's how the play is going to uh, come about. They're able to understand themselves in a way that, um, of course, helps them in the classroom and outside the classroom, but they're also empathetic and understanding towards others. They're able to make connections with others, so they're wonderful friends, they're compassionate, and um, they're just really excited to be around others. They tend to have wonderful relationships and be able to take ideas and communicate things in ways that really resonate with other people. So despite the fact that they might have a difficult time uh, with the written word, and despite the fact they might have a difficult time trying to take their ideas and putting on paper, uh, dyslexics tend to be very, very verbal individuals, and they tend to be very comfortable in that space. That's where they tend to thrive. Um, so at the same time, these are kids that go on to be politicians and great orators and actors, amazing and accomplished writers and authors. Um, uh, throughout history and even today, some of the most popular writers in the world are dyslexic. Um, and that's because they have an amazing command of our language. They have amazing command of words. In the classroom, dyslexic students really need an opportunity to shine with their imagination and their creativity. If you want them to be inside the box, they're not going to be. So many of our dyslexic students are incredibly imaginative. They 
are daydreamers, but of course with dyslexics, they're thinking of so many different things in their mind and coming up with um, so many creative ideas. I see a child who's looking out of the window because they're thinking about what you've said, they're processing it, and they're gonna give you an incredible answer in a minute when they've worked out how they're gonna say it. Um, they're thinking about what you've said and probably linking it to something you haven't even thought of. It's something that we need to help them understand when is it appropriate, how do we work with them to cultivate that so that we, we, we don't diminish oh, uh, that, that really that truly amazing capability um, uh, while also making sure that they, uh, they do meet the expectations of, of the classroom. If you're giving an assignment, I think you need to think of those creative brains and how can they best show what they know. They like to think. We need to give them time to do that. Dyslexic people like to think. They like to think about what you've asked them and they need t time to give you the answer. But they're often thinking because they're good thinkers <laughs> and they're going to give you something amazing in their response. Don't just limit it to multiple choice answers or a quiz or a test on paper. How can you as an educator get out the information from them in, a, in the way that best suits their brain. People talk about computers being the fourth industrial revolution. They can do all their linear thinking. They can do the things that are the barriers. A computer can't think laterally around a problem. A computer can only generate the data it's being given. And you need that neurodiversity, you need that dyslexic brain to be able to see that bigger picture. Without question, dyslexics bring uh, amazing opportunities to the workforce. And when really we think about the 21st century and what it holds and the demands on, on the jobs of tomorrow, dyslexics are going to thrive and bring so much to that. We recently produced a report with EY that looked at how important dyslexic thinking skills are for the future. They actually looked at the research that the World Economic Forum had done around how skills are changing and artificial intelligence is completely transforming the skills map that employers are looking for. They then took those skills and mapped them directly across dyslexic thinking skills, and there's a complete match. So we know how hugely important it is that educators right now are looking for those skills and enabling and nurturing them. I think it's vital that teachers are trained about dyslexics because the world is changing and, uh, and imagination is key to everything and there's going to be a lot of kids whose potential are lost unless we train our teachers to effectively teach them.